I've been a sport professional for a good 30 years now. Um, I think I was always kind of destined to do this line of work. My mum was a carer, so we always had like young people, kids and everything in and out of the house. Um, it was typical. When I left school, I got a job in the same factory as my dad worked in. I worked there for years. And then I moved through this area and I just continued working in factories because that's all I knew really. Um, but once all the factories started closing down, I decided that I kind of wanted to explore something that I wanted to do, something I was brought up with. Um, and again, that's from my mum um, and just living in that environment. So I went for a job in care. No experience necessary. We'll give you the training. So I thought, right, I'm going to give this a go. I took the leap and here I'm 30 years later, still doing the job. I absolutely love it. So you come in, you check your diary, check all your paperwork, do your meds count, do your finance count, and this generally plan your day. Um, you have some environments where the day's planned out <coughs> ahead of you. But with Dan, we kind of go over the flow, see what the mood of the day and see what the weather's like, what takes you. So this morning, we done a shopping list, we went up to Sainsbury's, got a shopping done. Mm. Yeah. Came back, had some lunch, and then we went up to the park for a nice walk. And then mm. we're back home on some tea and biscuits before dinner. Myself, many, many years ago, I see I started off in the, working in a nursing home, and then I moved on to working with young people and the complex needs. Um, young people with autism, and that is, uh, it can be a really complex condition, and I found that really interesting. It spurned my interest into studying more about the condition, and studying more about ways we can help people um, with the condition, and that just kind of carried on, and over the years, I've just sort of like mm. followed that path, because um, what it does, it gets me thinking, and it gets me using all my experience I've had in the past 30 mm. years, and how I can apply that to assist Dan. Um, one of the most memorable ones was, um, it was a young gentleman um, who had just left school. Um, he had a very rare condition, um, with lots of complications, <laughs> that for him, um, his outlook wasn't too promising. Um, one of his wishes and dreams was to follow a normal life, so he wanted to go to college, he wanted to do things that people his age, teenagers, would go out and do. <laughs> so I was proud to be part of that. Um, we went to college, he got his qualifications, and it wasn't a case of, okay, we did everything for him. We supported him in college, we put systems in place so he could do the work himself. So when he got his certificate at the end of his course, he was so proud because of an achievement he had made. I think I, I've worked with Cargo on for approximately five years now. Um, and what I've always found is that the management team are all very supportive. Um, they put me through my SPQ qualifications. They're always open to listen to ideas and new ways of working. Um, and they appreciate what you do from the ground level of support workers um. right through the top management. Um, I think we're all very open mm. and we're a very good team and we all support each other. I think that's that's what makes Cargom different, I think, from other organisations. Mm. Um, management being supportive, excellent training, and I think if you come to a manager and say, right, mm. I want to know more about this, they will support you in your journey and, and getting that education. Uh, I think that's the, the difference. That, the quality that, that Cargom gives us. That Cargom is not is a non-profit organisation. I think that makes a huge difference to the kind of support we deliver in our ethos. The mm. is that it's, a, it's perhaps a predominantly female role. Um, in the discussion I had with you earlier, males have a great, mm. a great place to to be in the care sector. Mm. Um, 
it's like Gandhi's male role models. There's there's lots of of male service users that we support who perhaps need that male connection mm. um, to build their own identity as well. Um, like I said, I've done this job mm. for thirty years now, and I've loved to do it. But I've made huge changes in people's lives um, just with be bringing a sort of male perspective. Um, whether it's advice, whether it's to do with health, whether it's just talking about the blokes things, um, it's all important. So, yeah, I think that there's, there's great room for males and females within the sector, and we haven't got enough males. Working in social care. Do you know, it's part of my life, and that's what I think... If I wasn't working in social care, my life would feel like there's something missing. Um, outside of work, I'm a very caring person as well. I can't sort of do anything for anyone, empathise with anyone. You know, I'm just that kind of caring person. And I think, yeah, if I didn't do it, my life would feel <coughs> emptier. 30 years ago when I started, I was young, I didn't have a family, I had all the hours in the day to work and, and that's what I did. Um, I worked a lot, I worked a lot of hours, weekends, evenings, the lot. But later on in life, once I had kids, um, and me and my, me and my ex-partner separated, <coughs> the care sector allowed me to work flexibly because we had shared custody at the time, so it's always been good to me, so I could get my kids every single weekend, mm. I could work during the week, and the, the care sector accommodated that, and it has done throughout my career. All I've had to do is say to my manager, look, this is happening, can we accommodate that, and we can enjoy the time, we've moved heaven and earth to, to accommodate that. And I think that's what it is. There's, there's, yeah, there is set hours, um, but there's always that flexibility there mm. if, if you need it because we're all caring people managers are caring as well they've worked through the care sector as well so yeah, they, they, they empathise with those situations so it, it's always been good to me in that, in that respect I think just being honest being friendly mm. And just, I generally want to, to help somebody out, do you know what I mean? Okay. It, everybody's just another human being, uh, and that's what it is. And the way I see it is, okay, you're just mm. giving someone a, a dig out that perhaps can't do some mm. things for themselves. I would like to think that okay, if any of my family and any of my kids were in a position, somebody would help them. And, and that's all it is to me. You're just helping other people out that, that otherwise can't do something for themselves. <sighs> yes, the advice we give beyond the basic training you get, as you go on throughout mm. your career and you get to mo meet more people, start asking questions. Do you know what I mean? If there's something you don't understand, mm. why is a person doing a thing a certain way? Why can't they do this? Ask your manager to ask. There's always people there with a bit more experience than yourself that may have came across what you're coming across just now. Speak to the team. We've got a whole other professionals behind us. Don't be scared to open your mouth and ask.